the U.S. attack at everything. This attacks pagodas, temples, the houses, schools, and uh, hospitals. They adopt the genocide. They try to destroy everything in a village. They want uh, that uh, nobody can live in that village. In the last four years, the U.S. have come here and attacked uh, our town. You have seen the ruins. And as you have seen the ruins, you may find that the crimes perpetrated by the U.S. and police here. I was uh, sitting and learning together with my classmates. Two bombs were dropped, made me get wounded. My aunts and uncles have transported me to the hospital and I got soon recovered. I came back to the school to carry on with my studies. He has uh, doing well, he has been doing well. He has made uh, uh, good achievements in his work. He was uh, buried uh, by earth, caused by bombs. He survived. Đồng chí Sĩ là những người mà lương thiện làm cá để cung cấp lợi nhân nhưng mà chúng cũng đem bom mà đánh phá ở trên mặt biển. They adopt a war of extermination and they attack around the clock and these attacks continued for months on end. We receive a very privileged uh, treatment by the U.S. imperialists. woman told us three times we rebuilt this village the French destroyed our school and pagoda the Japanese burned our rice warehouses the US planes have dropped more bombs than we can count and napalm and pellets each time we rebuild I come from the South. I know how hard the life is there. My whole family worked on a French rubber plantation, but we could not live on the wages we were paid. We almost starved. There was no food in the countryside. Only the rich and the French had all the food they wanted. I ate so little my hair came out in clumps when I pulled at it. My family married me to a peddler who went from village to village. He worked with the Viet Minh carrying information and messages 
One day he did not come back, and then the Viet Minh sent an officer to tell me he had been caught by the French and shot. So I left that village and went to Wei. Every day I went to the French garrison and counted the number of platoons and what weapons they carried. I sent my son on bicycle to tell the Viet Minh. When the French occupied Wei, we went into the jungles. We fought in the jungles until the French were defeated. I have cooked thousands of meals for our soldiers, and I've carried messages, set traps, planted bombs, even fired a rifle. I have killed the French, and I would kill the Americans too if they came here. We lived in our shelters throughout the bombing. We still keep them ready. Until the Americans are driven out of the South, there can be no peace. Many of us have grown old fighting for our country, but we are not tired, and our young people are strong. We have defeated the French and the Japanese, and we will also defeat the Americans. I helped to organize this neighborhood market. Before the revolution, there was only the central market. If we got there too late, the few fruits and vegetables. Only the French could afford what little milk or meat there was. I joined the party when I was 18 because I saw the party work every day to try to improve our life. Party organizers came into villages and said, we don't have to live this way. Our land is rich enough. Our people are strong and hardworking. When we control all our resources, we can make a new and better life for ourselves. was more than 20 years ago. Since then, we have faced all the problems that arose as we tried to build the society we wanted. We needed new foods to improve our diet and our health. The French concentrated on rice for their own profit. They never tried to diversify our food. We had to learn to grow new crops and then to teach these methods to our people. We had to overcome old habits that wasted land. And once we harvested the new foods, we had to distribute them throughout the country so that everyone shared. All this has meant hard work for us. I have worked in this store for the past four years, and even here we have not solved many of our problems. But throughout our cities and countryside, people eat plentifully and well. Soon we'll have enough milk for everyone, and not just the children. Someday, meat won't be rationed. Our surplus fruits and rice go soft to feed our countrymen fighting the Americans. After the war is over, we'll use that surplus to buy the machines that can help us increase our food production. What we want is simple, a better life for all our people. Our shift in our militia group aren't up to full strength yet. During the air war, all of us left Hanoi and split up into small groups. I worked underground in Tan Hoa. Some of the others went to the Viet Bac. Now we stay prepared, but our drills are mostly a way to teach the younger ones, those who never left the city, never fired a rifle or loaded a heavy gun during a U.S. attack.
We keep all our factories going three shifts a day. I work the night shift from 11 till 7 in the morning. Our whole group talked it over and decided to volunteer because we didn't have families to take care of. Our factory makes the basic cloth we use in Vietnam. As we make more cloth each year, we can begin to export and bring in the things we need. We need looms. These looms are old. Some of them go back to the French. It takes us hours of careful work to keep them going. Before the air war, some of us spent one day a week at the Polytechnic, learning how to take apart and repair all our machines. But our shift left Hanoi at the same time the Polytechnic was decentralized. They're only just beginning to return from the countryside. I spent three years at school in the countryside before I ever saw the Polytechnic or Hanoi. I know our labs are simple, but to us they offer great possibilities. The only chemistry I learned before was the periodic tables and a set of formulas memorized from a Russian textbook. All of us feel the same excitement here as we begin to work with the tools we need. Yes, we know that our work is practical and applied when compared to scientific research in the West. But all our tasks are concrete and practical until the entire country is no longer underdeveloped. Someday, I think, the Polytechnic will be a center of basic research and our children will greatly expand the useful limits of men's knowledge.
冲，冲到对，冲到对，对家姑家婆啊！哎，走。Em nói thật đi, à, súng tốt rồi thì em cứ đi đi, em xem ạ, à, từ trước đến nay hề mà em cầm súng đi chiến đấu á. Sao vàng vặt, hạt sướng xa bám tròm, râu bạc lung linh. Vậy tôi hứa hẹn cùng nhau là quyết xây của mình ăn đêm. When the Central Committee met at the province level, we tried to develop the most concrete goals for our villages. Rebuild all bombed houses and replace destroyed belongings and food as quickly as possible. Dig more shelters and dig them deeper and stronger. For throughout the province, shelters are the key to the safety and confidence of the people. We used each night to prepare for the next day's raids. We needed great mobility and resourcefulness, for as we brought down more planes, they would change their tactics. Raids at dawn, at nightfall, they use time bombs, chemicals, continuous shelling from the 7th Fleet. But our confidence never diminished and we never relaxed our vigilance. Our province brought down the nation's 3,000th plane and many of our gun crews have received awards. Though they worked both night and day, artillerymen requested not to be rotated into lighter duties. And there were so many men and women from our villages who volunteered for any aircraft training that we were never able to train all of them. Some of the gun crews that had worked together for many months found ways to simplify the moving of the guns. And they developed techniques for coordinating their fire and taking advantage of local conditions so that officers of the province learned much from their experience. <laughs> We keep complete records in order to forget nothing. We want to remember not only our suffering, but also our hatred and our victories. We record the date of each raid, the names of everyone injured and the extent of their injuries. Any party secretary can tell you exactly who and what each family has lost. In our houses of tradition, we keep photographs, a part of each plane downed, equipment of the captured pilots the weapons that were used against us and the weapons that we used to defend ourselves. We keep our awards there and all the things that will remind us of our daily struggle. Many years after the Americans are defeated, our children will visit these houses to learn of the war we have fought. But we celebrate our achievements not only in the villages but also in Hanoi. We come together from all over our country as many friends. Hanoi is the capital city, but it must never be apart from our villages. This old man told us, when I was a young man, I said, you better leave this country. You don't have rights here. You don't own land. You can't even make a living. So I went to Singapore to work in the docks, but the English threw me in jail and then shipped me back to Vietnam. There was still no work. I was jailed by the French for stealing. Then I killed a French soldier and fled to the Delta. I lived like a bandit. Then I joined the Viet Minh and fought the French for 11 years. I was at Dien Bien Phu when they marched out under our guns. I thought we won and that we'd never have to fight again. The valley of Dien Bien Phu was a wasteland from the craters of our shells. We went to work in the land the French ruined and we built it up again. We built schools and hospitals in the countryside, factories to make what we needed. We dug thousands of miles of new dikes and planted rice on land where weeds wouldn't grow.
My village was bombed and half destroyed on the same day I got the letter from Hanoi admitting me to the Polytechnic. I didn't want to leave, but my father told me to go. He said there would always be enough villagers to man the anti-aircraft guns and build the shelters. And how would we get the engineers and doctors we needed if everyone stayed home to defend his village? Besides, I wouldn't be going to Hanoi, but to the Kiang Valley. Not so far north and almost as dangerous. The Polytechnic had been decentralized and faculties were scattered throughout the countryside. So I left my village and traveled north to join my classmates. We went through our share of the bombing, rebuilt the roads the Americans cut and filled their craters. Many of us had relatives and friends we'd never see again. We had to fight the feeling of being spared. So we worked constantly. We built our classrooms and labs from bamboo, constructed or invented all our tools. And what we couldn't make ourselves, the army engineers found. Or else we used American contributions. We dismantled the wrecks of their engines to make spare parts for our lathes and turners. We built telephone relays from the remains of their instrument panels. And we helped the local people bring in the harvest and clear new land. We learned their local songs to sing with the ones we taught each other. <laughs> Every three months, two of us were chosen to go to Hanoi to man the Polytechnic's defenses. All the faculties helped rotate the gun crews. We kept the Polytechnic open throughout the war. On the 15th anniversary of the signing of the Geneva Accords, a mass meeting of representatives of the entire nation was held in Hanoi. The following appeal, written by Ho Chi Minh, was read by Prime Minister Pham Van Dong. Countrymen, the armed forces and people in the north have defeated the U.S. aggressor's air war. The armed forces and people in the south are defeating the U.S. land war. Four-fifths of South Vietnam's territory with three quarters of its population have been liberated. Under these victorious conditions, the South Vietnam Congress of People's Representatives met and elected the Provisional Revolutionary Government of South Vietnam. After the total liberation of South Vietnam from foreign invasion, the Provisional Coalition Government will organize free and democratic general elections to enable the South Vietnamese people to determine for themselves their own government. But so long as U.S. troops and the Saigon administration remain, genuinely free and democratic elections will be impossible. Therefore, the Vietnamese people demand the withdrawal of all U.S. troops and their satellites.
Not simply the withdrawal of only 25,000 or 250,000 or 500,000 men, but a total, complete, unconditional withdrawal. The defeat of U.S. imperialism is evident, but they still have not given up their attempts to cling to the southern half of our country. We are determined to wage the resistance war until the complete withdrawal of U.S. troops and until the total collapse of the puppet army and administration in order to liberate the South, defend the North, and proceed toward the peaceful reunification of our country. Throughout Vietnam, poems are often recited at meetings, ceremonies, and gatherings. This is a poem by Ho Chi Minh about the day-to-day -day work in the rice deltas of North Vietnam. Village cooperatives in North Vietnam meet regularly to plan their production, review their work, and discuss the political problems of the country. In this meeting, the village is considering how to carry out Ho Chi Minh's appeal, delivered 10 days earlier by Pham Ban Dong in Hanoi. The villagers are suggesting different ways to increase production. Geese and duck flocks can be increased. The production of fertilizer expanded. Village members question each other. How many days can you spare our work team sowing the north fields? Can building of the new school and clinic continue? The increase is for the South, for countrymen fighting the Americans. Even though the bombing has stopped, our country is still at war until the Americans are driven out of the South. Uh, 
After the war and after reunification, we will concentrate on our major battle to constantly improve the life in our village and in the entire country. Ho Chi Minh said in his will to the Vietnamese people, my ultimate wish is that our whole party and people, united in struggle, build a peaceful, unified, independent, democratic, and prosperous Vietnam, and make a worthy contribution to the world revolution.